What we have here is the Nordson Universal Fluid Pressure Regulator. This is the device that regulates how much flow you will be having to your spray device. It's air, air piloted, meaning we put a certain amount of air pressure to it, which will open and close the needle, which will regulate how much flow of paint we get through it. We have marked on the bottom the outlet. That would be where the fluid comes out, go into your spray device. And then we have an inlet. We have two inlet ports. One we have plugged on this, but you can have your fluid coming in and back out and you can have it in a circulating loop up to your fluid pressure regulator. Here we're just bringing the fluid up through the regulator and out. What we're going to do is take this apart, show you the internal components and what you need to be careful with when you're taking apart and reassembling it. First I'm going to remove the cap on the air side. Again it is divided into two sides. You got your air and your fluid side on the bottom. And you'll see that regarding the diaphragm when we get in there. So I want to remove this top cap and go ahead and remove the bottom cap. Now this is all laid out in the manual step by step for disassembly and assembly. I'm sort of uh, speeding it up here a bit but again for your first time you may want to follow the manual uh, and so you get it exactly right. It talks about in the manual about putting air to it and the reason for that is so you lift the stem off the seat. What they don't want you doing is remove turning that and spinning it on the carbide seat and scratching it. What I do is go ahead and remove the cap on this side. I push on this a little bit and what that does it goes ahead and lifts that stem off the seat so I can do it without scratching it. So I'll put a little pressure on that Go ahead and put my screwdriver, if you look in there, there's a slot on the stem to remove it. So I'll go ahead, push on this, turn that, make sure I'm lifting it up, unscrew this, there we go, alright, unscrew that all the way, and that'll pop out. You've got a little clear washer, you want to make sure you don't lose. Then you have your stem and your seat. And what happens, this works up against there. Air pressure moves this, allows it to open and close. The more open, the more flow. All the way closed would be no flow or low flow. That's on the fluid side. Then I can go to the air side, remove this piece. come out. You've got your stem and spring there and this spacer was in there also. That fell out when I turned it upside down. So now I've got those pieces apart. I can go ahead and I can remove the top half of the bonnet from the lower. So what I want to do is go ahead unscrew this. Lots of threads. And this is what seals the air side from the fluid side. And what came out with that is the diaphragm. This is what flexes. And it's got basically just a normal rubber on one side and the other side is Teflon bonded to it. The Teflon side is the side that sees the fluid. This side sees the air. Inside the lower bonnet, you can see there's a groove. And in that groove, there is an O-ring. If you want to make sure that O-ring is intact, if, if not, it should, a new one should come in the kit, you can replace it. You can see the diaphragm has a, a, a rim on it also. That rim will fit right down into that groove. And that helps to seal. Again, air on this side, air on this side, fluid on the other. We don't want the fluid going to this side, we don't want the air going to that side. Now, probably a very critical part regarding reassembly is on the edge of this diaphragm, on the rubber side, you, what you want to do is put a little bit of O-ring lube to make that slippery. Because what happens is, I set that in there, 
I put this part on, this is what seals right here. So what I want is to do when I get on there that this will slide on here a little bit so it allow me to screw it on and get a good seal. If I don't put anything on there and I have this reel dry, instead of that spinning on there and sliding, it'll actually grab it and start to tear it when I tighten it and I won't really know how well I've tightened it. So again, assemble, o-ring lube on that edge. You can even put a little o-ring lube on this flat here. Go ahead, tighten it back up. Get it up there so it bottoms out. Now I know I've hit that edge of the diaphragm. Again, I've got that lube on there. Now I can go ahead and tighten this, and this is what, again, seals the liquid on, keeps it on that side. And just go ahead and snug that up. You don't need to go too tight. Just, just give it a good snug so it feels like it's going to seal against that diaphragm. All right. Next step is to go ahead and put in my spacer on the air side. I got my spring, my screw. That goes in here. And you can see the threads in there that that'll screw to. So go ahead and line everything up. Go ahead and get that started. You want to screw that in until it's snug. Okay. All right. Then go ahead, now you want to put the seat, the spacer, or the stem and the seat back in, but remember this little clear O-ring, that goes in first. Drop that in there, make sure it goes into the seat. You can see that in there. All right, then you, again, you've got, and this is replaceable, this will wear, depending on the, the coating that you're using and how long it's been in there. But these will wear, so you want to make sure you get that together, let's clean it up. Go ahead and line that up in there, drop it in there. And go ahead and tighten it back up. And again, you want to snug this up pretty good. Get that in there, you don't want that coming apart. So you got that back together. Now you can go ahead, put your spacer in. Put the air side cap back on. You can go ahead and tighten that up so basically it bottoms out. That's what that spacer is for. And on the other side, go ahead and screw this back in. Put some O-ring lube on that seal. And then you want to tighten this back up. And you want to leave one thread showing. Just about like that. And that is it.